Bye. Red Lobster's finer points of fun dining. At Lobster Fest, whether you're a seafoodie or a lobster newbie, there's something for everyone. Try one of six dishes like new lobster and shrimp tacos for $17.99 and leave completely lobsessed. Welcome to fun dining. Not to reach I didn't get that. Oh, buddy. You need a hug. You also need consumer selling. Get the exact same coverage as the nation's leading carriers and 100% U.S.-based customer support starting at $20. Consumer Cellular. What else is going to be in this cup besides coffee? Tomorrow on E.T., the stars descend on Arizona. <laughs> I'll be with Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul, Anthony Ramos, just to name a few, plus a halftime fashion flashback. Michelle and Matt, the party is just starting down here in Arizona. All right, Kev. And speaking of fashion, was he trying to match the E.T. Mike flag? Listen, he might be <laughs> on to something. <laughs> okay, Kevin Frazier. All right, before we go, Jamie Foxx and Cameron Diaz are back. Happening now. Parts of Turkey are devastated following a powerful earthquake. We'll tell you how one organization is helping those in need and how you can help, too. A cold front greets us tonight. I'll let you know what that means for temperatures and winds. And we'll be chatting about our next chance of rain, which is just around the corner. We're going to be live at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo for day one. And I'll tell you why the Texas Cowboy has got a big history here. The News at 5 starts right now. At First at 5, imagine having loved ones trapped in the devastating earthquake in Turkey. It's a reality for some in San Antonio tonight. Today, rescue teams in Turkey battling freezing temperatures following a powerful earthquake along the Turkey-Syria border. The cold weather impacting search teams as well as survivors who are just looking for shelter. Our Camelia Juarez tells us how one man in San Antonio from Turkey devastated by the number of missing friends and relatives. Yusuf Kayak is heartbroken, seeing videos of his home country in shambles. Some of his relatives are still missing. Today was just like, there is nothing that we can do right now. We just need to go back because they saved three or four their family members from the rubble. But the rest of three, they, they can't even do anything. Kayak says he knows at least 10 people who died in the 7.8 magnitude earthquake. The death toll is nearing 20,000 in Turkey and Syria. It makes me feel like cry because I lost people that I knew it. While he feels helpless far from home, there is a way you can help the survivors. Murat Tosh with the American Turkish Association of San Antonio says it is collecting coats, blankets, and hygiene products at La Madeleine off 281. Here, 99% of the items are brand new. At this point, we need medical equipment and monetary donations. Donations will be accepted here at La Medellina off 20, 281 until 730 this evening. And then from here, it will get sent straight to those people in need in Turkey. Reporting live, Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. The body pulled from a river. We have an update on a death in Seguin right now. The person whose vehicle was pulled from the Guadalupe River there has been identified as 29-year-old Noel Hernandez. He's from Overton, which is in East Texas. According to a witness around two this morning, he was seen speeding before his Nissan Rogue eventually plunged into the Guadalupe. The reporting party stated they were uh, behind a vehicle that was driving at a high rate of speed. It hit a guardrail, went down an embankment, and the caller confirmed that they saw that the car entered uh, the river. Divers spent hours trying to recover Hernandez's body. New Braunfels police help pull that car out of the river. We're still working to learn the name of a man killed in a shooting last night. It happened around 10 o'clock on Northwest Military Highway and Lock Hill Selma, near Lock Hill Selma. San Antonio police say two men were arguing in front of a food mart when one of them pulled out a gun and shot the other. The victim taken to University Hospital where he later died. That suspect was arrested. Several people in the hospital after they were hit by a motorcyclist last night. We told you about it on the night beat. It happened on West Martin and North General McMullen, where a man and two women were crossing the street there. It's unclear what caused that crash. We do know the two men are in the hospital. The women are said to be OK. SAPD says that motorcyclist unresponsive before he was taken by EMS to a local hospital. It's unclear if he or the people crossing the street will face charges. Let me be clear, 
we messed up. Today, Southwest Airlines taking accountability on Capitol Hill in regards to the holiday travel chaos that happened back in December. Maybe you were caught up in it. You might remember millions of passengers left stranded at U.S. airports, including San Antonio's because of issues that snowballed and led to flights being grounded. In total, Southwest says the issues which stem from winter operations being mishandled in Denver cost about $800 million. That's what started the dominoes falling. The last domino was the crew scheduling system uh, not being able to function as, as we'd like. Pilots have been uh, sounding the alarm bells for, for over a decade. The Southwest Pilots Union says signs about the outdated, outdated technology were long ignored by management. Southwest says the crew scheduling system is being updated tomorrow, should be able to handle severe weather soon. The airline says it is still refunding passengers. What a day today. Beautiful, bright sunshine, just some high clouds streaming overhead at the moment. 71 degrees officially at the airport last reading. Dew point right now 36. We have that dry, crisp air in place. You go to the Rio Grande, flirting with 80 in Del Rio. Warren's backyard at 78 degrees. Shirts at 71. You go to Lavernia about 72 and Bernie now at 72 degrees. A comfortable evening out there. By 8 o'clock, we'll be at 61. 10 o'clock, 55 turning windy by midnight. A cold front hits tonight. It's actually the first of three cold fronts that are in our forecast. So get ready for temperatures in the lower 40s tomorrow morning around San Antonio. 42, get up into the hill country. We'll have some mid 30s along with gusty winds. We'll get into the windy details in a moment, but notice by Saturday morning, we're down to freezing Sunday morning at 35 before those morning temperatures rebound. More on the cold fronts, well, multiple cold fronts in just a bit and our temperature trend and next rain chance coming up. All right, grab those boots and hat. The day is finally here. The kickoff to the San Antonio Stock Show in Roto. It's happening now through February 26th on the grounds of the AT&T Center. Let's take you there now. Sky 12 flying above the crowd on the first day of the rodeo. And what a spectacular day it is. You know who's also out there? Our very own Ursula Perry. She's standing by for a special that's going to happen tonight. Ursula, beautiful weather to kick this thing off. You just couldn't ask for more. You, you couldn't. You're not sweating. You're not cold. Nice little breeze rolling here. We're high above with a bird's eye view of the rodeo grounds here right in front of the Bud Light Center where they're going to have live music tonight. The Fajita Corral has been handing out food. People have been eating out here since about 3 o'clock this afternoon. A lot of adult beverages already being served. A lot of animals roaming around the rodeo grounds. People are able to get a really up close view, get a good education on the livestock situation of Texas, something they may not see very often. Over here, we've got the horse discovery area where there's more education going on and that's where the competitors are warming up. The rodeo is going to get started at seven o'clock and we're going to bring it to you live here on KSAT 12. In the meantime, this is called the Cantina. It's a two-story bar, and it's absolutely amazing. And as you can see, already extremely popular. We're going to be back in just a few minutes. We're going to be showing you kind of the untold story of a group of cowboys. They're now hooping and hollering, and they're ready to rodeo San Antonio. We'll be back in just a bit to tell you more about this group of black cowboys that are getting the attention they really do deserve. Sounds good. Thank you, Ursula. Well, let's check out traffic right now on this Thursday. A lot of people heading down to the rodeo grounds. This is 35 at Loop 410. It is always a bit of a slowdown here, and that's certainly the case today. No major traffic tie-ups, though, or accidents, I should say, to tell you about. This is a bit of a headache for those who are out there. Well, if you have anywhere to go before 7 o'clock, it might be a good time to fuel up. Circle K offering a discount on gas for one day only. It's going on till 7 o'clock tonight. Circle K customers can save 25 cents a gallon at participating locations across the state. We swung by the Circle K near San Antonio College, where they're also handing out gift cards for 10 cents per gallon that can be used and reused till they expire in May. It's a win-win. Hey, something have to go down. When eggs are $8, hey, 
I'll take the drop in the gas price. So this is my Christmas gift for me today. $20 worth of gas that normally would have cost me $40 today. So I do appreciate this. All right. It's not 10 cents per gallon. It's 10 cents off per gallon. 10 cents a gallon, that'd be a great bargain, but no, 10 cents off, I'll take that as well. The company says it hopes to make customers' lives a little easier so they can remain a favorite fuel destination. The strollers to, to dog food. I want to warn you about some potentially dangerous products. We're going to start with the strollers because they're linked to one child's death. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us what parents need to do. Baby Trend is warning parents about two strollers after a 14 month old child died. We're talking about certain sit and stand double and ultra strollers. Regulators say the toddler who was not even in the stroller got his neck stuck between the pivoting canopy tube and the armrest. The father was right there, but he was unable to see in time. Parents are urged to remove the canopy unless you're using it. Don't let children play on the stroller and secure children who are in the stroller. Skip Hop is recalling a half million plush cloud toys. The silver lining cloud is just one part of the activity gym. Parents should cut off the raindrops because a child could choke on them. IKEA recall. 12,000 Odger swivel chairs are recalled because the leg base can break. This is the gray color. Folks have fallen and been hurt. IKEA is giving refunds. If this is your dog's food, stop feeding it to him. Nestle Purina is recalling certain bags of Purina Pro Plan Veterinary Diets EL Elemental Dry Dog Food. It may have too much vitamin D. That can be toxic. The food is sold by prescription. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. You're still ahead at five. We're going to head back to the San Antonio Stock Show in Rodeo with Ursula, and she's going to take us on a ride through the history of the Black Cowboy and we'll explain what life after emancipation was really like for some of these settlers. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAP newsroom. Here's what we're working on for the news at six o'clock today. Will he or won't he? Time's running out for embattled city councilman Clayton Perry to decide whether he will run for reelection. How his legal troubles are shaping up the race for District 10. Plus, an LGBTQ pride flag is back in a Bear County courtroom. That's after a local judge won an appeal. Erica Hernandez explains today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. All right, let's go live. Back with Sky 12 over the rodeo carnival grounds. What a beautiful day. This, is, of course, will fill up later. But right now, it is opening day for the rodeo. And there's a lot going on. A lot of people who are already down there. One of them is our Ursula Perry. Ursula joins us live as she always does for the first day of the San Antonio Rodeo. Ursula. I, I know you're so jealous, but you know what? Someone's got to do this job. You should smell this place. It's just full of turkey legs and blooming onions and everything else. So many people came out because the weather is so gorgeous. It is opening night of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The rodeo is going to get started at 7 o'clock. It's going to be live right here on KSAT 12. But there is a story you need to hear about, the Black Cowboy. It's a fascinating story, and it's finally getting the recognition it deserves. The Whitty Museum created the Black Cowboy exhibit a few years ago, and since then it's gone all around the country, telling a tale that few have heard. Some of it surprised even the curator who researched it. As we read more and more, we found that there were numerous examples of these enslaved men, and some of them were women, that worked as cowboys on ranches throughout Southeast Texas. One in particular was Hector Bazzi. He was born a slave, but when he was freed, he found work as a cowboy. These are the chaps he wore on cattle drives here in Texas. Hector Bazzi, his narrative tells an interesting story about what it was like to be a black cowboy after um, Reconstruction. Um, when white supremacy and racism was, a, was really running rampant in Texas. But Davis says in ways the black cowboy had more standing than most. Race did not factor as much in terms of pay. 
And when a cowboy was needed, the color of his skin was unimportant. In the stampede, no one's asking like, oh, wait, let me skip the black cowboy and ask the white cowboy to, to get this, this herd under control. No, they're riding for their lives. They're riding to get these things back in order. And so race, in that sense, um, in those times of emergency, was about your skills as a cowboy. Emancipation made it possible for black cowboys who developed their skills to start their own ranches, particularly in the Texas Panhandle, eastern counties, and Kansas. And while you will see black competitors at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo this year, there is a very active black professional rodeo circuit running all across the nation. It truly is an amazing story. And you can see there's a there's a museum in Texas now dedicated to the black cowboy. And you're going to hear more and more about it. There's even a show that is going to be debuting made by the same people who made Yellowstone about black cowboys. So stand by for that. But also stand by because we are carrying the rodeo live tonight on ksat and ksat.com at seven o'clock and we are going to have a great after post rodeo party here on ksat 12 leading you into the 10 o'clock news and the night beat so stand by we're going to have a rodeo for losers adam and thank you for the nice weather well done my friend oh it turned out great today what a way to kick off the San antonio stock show and rodeo but it won't be rodeo time without not just one, but several cold fronts. We've got the first one hitting us tonight. That's gonna to be a windy cold front, no precipitation with it. Some noticeable temperature swings in between these cold fronts and just one of them bringing us a chance of rain. That's it. Let's talk temperatures and take a look at the latest cold front that's moving through Texas now. It's just outside of Del Rio and Junction. You go to Midland, it's 57, Lubbock 44, Amarillo 34 degrees, even Abilene at 53. Meanwhile, locally around town, we're in the 70s, so we're clearly still on the warm side of this front. Catula now 78, Seguin 71, along with Bandera and Halotus currently at 72 degrees. So a beautiful afternoon, but once that cold front hits at midnight, temperatures will fall off and we'll start the day tomorrow right around 40 degrees, some 30s in the hill country, a little above freezing though. And around San Antonio, we're about 42 degrees within 1604 and 410 by noon tomorrow up to 53 and then a high of only 57 that's below average for this time of year and you look at high temperatures all across our area Seguin 57 Floresville Pleasanton only about 61 Kerrville 53 degrees for your high temperature tomorrow so you will be feeling the chill all day long tomorrow average high by the way now up to 67 so we're a good 10 degrees below average tomorrow saturday baby stepping our way upward back to 60 sunday and monday mid 60s and then we do get back to the 70 degree mark by the early and middle part of next week and then you see how we drop off again toward the end of next week there will be some temperature fluctuations especially in the mornings we went over that earlier saturday morning Expect to freeze for the vast majority of our area. All right, the wind is something you're really going to notice. Not so much right now. A light south southeasterly breeze at the moment, but the wind is starting to shift in the Edwards Plateau. That's because of the cold front moving in. So you don't notice the wind now, but let's go to our wind future cast. And once that cold front hits at midnight, the wind is going to start picking up even earlier in the hill country. Wind gusts by 11 p.m. in the hill country, probably 25, 30 miles per hour. And check how these gusts really pick up as we go through the early morning hours. Uh, 30 to 35 miles per hour. We're talking especially for the morning commute tomorrow. So get ready for that gusty wind. If it's your trash recycling or organic pickup day, get ready for that lid to be popping around. And I hope the rest of that can is heavy enough or it's going to get tipped over. Something to keep in mind. Wind gusts likely around 35 to maybe even 40 miles per hour in some parts of our area through at least the first half of the day tomorrow. Now let's talk rain chances and Hey, look at this snow chances up in the panhandle yeah, that blue on the radar indicates the snow in New Mexico and even parts of the panhandle of Texas. We're not going to tap into any of that. Uh, unfortunately, no moisture from this cold front. And of course, we have to look at the upper level flow, this big dip in the upper level flow, helping to push that cold front through town later on tonight. But we'll just get a little bit of cloud cover from that. We're not going to tap into any of the moisture and actually this upper level high this bump, this little blue H, that settles in on Saturday, giving us a lot of sunshine for the next several days. Our next disturbance that'll be affecting us Monday night, 
That's still just west of British Columbia in Vancouver at this time. So that upper high settling in, keeping us sunny tomorrow through Saturday, increasing clouds, and then the upper next upper level disturbance affects us on Monday night with that 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Until other than that, we're dry. But windy tomorrow, windy Tuesday, windy on Thursday because of those fronts. All right. By the way, happy birthday, Adam. Oh, thank you, sir. All right. You know, they don't just have Brahma's down at the rodeo. They also have some of them at the Alamore Beer Company. <laughs> Brahma's at Beer and our friend Larry Ramirez. Larry. Yeah, that's right, guys. Uh, members of the San Antonio Brahmas of the XFL are here right now at Alamo Beer Company holding a meet and greet. The parking lot is packed. I've seen people running in with Steelers jerseys, and that's because former Pittsburgh Steeler great Heinz Ward is the Brahmas head coach. We will hear from him in a second. Plus, in the NBA, the San Antonio Spurs have traded away two players. Coming up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to the Alamo Beer Company, where right now you can hang out with members of the San Antonio Brahmas. That's because they are currently holding a meet and greet, and it certainly looks like a lot of fun. But first, the San Antonio Spurs made a couple of moves right before the trade deadline. Not long after they lost to the Raptors last night, the Woj tweeted, Toronto is acquiring Spurs center Jakob Pertl for center Kim Birch, a protected 2024 first-round draft pick, and two future second-round picks. The Spurs have since confirmed that trade. In 2018, Pertl was traded along with DeMar DeRozan to the Spurs in exchange for Kawhi and Danny Green. Pirtle spent four and a half seasons with the silver and black. And then late this afternoon, ahead of the trade deadline at 2 p.m. local time, the Spurs traded shooting guard Josh Richardson to the Pelicans for point guard Devontae Graham and four second round draft picks per multiple reports. The Spurs are certainly picking up some serious draft capital. So the Spurs will continue the rodeo road trip without Yach and Jay Rich tomorrow night at the Detroit Pistons. So back to the Brahmas. They are currently holding a meet and greet right here at the Alamo Beer Company until 7 p.m. Head coach and select players made the trip. Now, earlier today, we caught up with head coach to ask him about meeting some of their fans. Just to connect with our fan base, um, we're extremely excited to be in San Antonio. I think for a lot of our players that are down here, it's their first time in San Antonio. I want our players to understand they're not just playing for themselves, but they're playing for our fan base down here that have shown us nothing but love and support. Man, we're super excited. I can't wait for February 19th to come around. I know you've been in San Antonio quite a bit. Yes. What have you learned about the fans, just with talking with the mayor and other people, maybe fans themselves? Yeah, just passionate fan base. I mean, it re reminds me a lot of what I've accustomed to up in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, I worked along uh, for the last team they had. I was part of the executive side of that of it. So I saw the support firsthand and I saw how fans came out and showed some love to their football team. So now that football is back in San Antonio, uh, I wouldn't expect anything uh, any less than, than, than what I saw last time. And their fans are super passionate about all their sports team and they're just great, great fan base that just love sports. And, and uh, hopefully they love our football team. And I'll tell you what, the Brahmas are passionate about meeting their fan base. We'll have more from this meet and greet at 6 o'clock. Back to you in the studio. All right, Larry, I saw a guy walk behind you with a mask and a cape on. He's ready for the Brahmas opening game already. <laughs> he certainly is. <laughs> All right, thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. Have we mentioned it's opening day of the rodeo yet? <laughs> I think we have. Uh, of course, we'll have our, K our KSAT Rodeo special coming up at 7 o'clock tonight. The after party comes your way at 9. Ryan Bingham, by the way, performing during the rodeo. World News is next.